One way to measure infiltration in the field is using devices called infiltrometer. This photo shows you a sample automatic infiltrometer in which water is automatically pumped into the reservoir and infiltration rate is measured. Then you can use your laptop to download the data and put it in Excel like what I did over here. Column C1 represents time from very close to zero to 1.96 and column C2 represents small f, which is infiltration capacity or infiltration rates. These two columns represent measured data. But you know that there are models out there that can estimate and predict infiltration rate as well. One of those models is Horton model. The equation for Horton model is over here. And f sub c, f sub 0, and k are calibration parameters listed over here. Normally, you do not have the values for infiltration uh, parameters, and you need to calibrate Horton model based on measurements. So let's assume that we have this measurement over here, and we want to calibrate this Horton model based on, on the measurements that we got. First step is to assume some numbers for your calibration parameters. F sub zero in inches per hour is your maximum infiltration rate. I'm going to say 10 inches per hour. Um, F sub C is minimum infiltration in inches per hour. I'm going to assume 5 inches per hour. And K is a decay factor. I'm going to assume 1. These are assumed numbers. Later you can change them. As a matter of fact, we are going to use the solver function of Excel to automatically change these parameters to get a good fit. So. I have written the Horton equation over here. If I click on the formula bar, you can see the references to F sub 0, F sub C, and K. Once this is um, calculated, you will calculate Horton predicted uh, infiltration rate for all time steps. This line represents Horton prediction and time. Now, the line does not represent measure data. What we want to do is to change these parameters in a way that the line is a better representative representative of Horton um, measured data. So you can do it manually too. So right now if I increase F sub zero to 20, you will see that the line looks a little bit better. I think if I change it to 30, the line even looks better. You can do the same thing with other parameters to um, get a better line. However, we want to use um, a statistic to make this easier. So I am using normalized square errors over here, and I have calculated normalized square error for the first cell using this equation that you should be familiar with. So if I calculate normalized square error for all of the cells over here, and then um, have a summation of all these normalized squared errors. This cell, which is D28, will be my objective function. So my objective is to minimize this cell. The value is already very small because I manually changed some of it. So if I put it back to 10, you will see that this value increases. Okay, so we are going to use Excel function solver, which is under data tab, and then over here under analyze, to minimize that fun minimize that cell, D28. Minimize it, and then click solve. After a couple of seconds, you will see that um, your objective function is very close to zero. We're gonna accept this, and you will see that this, these parameters represent the best parameters that you can get for the Horton model. Now, from now on, you don't need to go to the go um, in the field and do the measurements. You can use these calibrated parameter for your study area and estimate the amount of infiltration capacity based on Horton model.